Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday morning Bible study. We're going to continue on now with the life of Moses as he enters into Pharaoh's court with his brother Aaron. Our text today is Exodus chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, After that, Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh. They said, God, the God of Israel, says, Free my people so they can hold a festival for me in the wilderness. Father, I thank you so much for the anointing to preach and to teach your word. And I believe that as we come together today, we will see how it is that you are determined to fulfill covenant in the lives of your people. I thank you that there is no length that you will not go to to see your children blessed and to see them have the very best in line with you and in line with your word. We love you and we thank you for it now, for it is in Jesus' name that we ask it. Amen. Now, remember yesterday, we saw Moses as he went to his father-in-law, Jethro, and asked for permission to leave with his wife and his two sons and go back to Egypt. His father blessed him. And on the way, we see where the angel of the Lord met up with uh, Moses and was going to kill him. And really a covenant statement uh, showing him that what God was saying about the death of the firstborn was a very real thing. Moses would personally experience being in that situation of making a decision. Zipporah, his wife, circumcised their eldest son and then took that to Moses to show him the sign of the covenant. And that was all it took for the angel of the Lord to say, I see the blood and back off. I believe it was a, a type, if you will, of what was about to happen in Egypt when they would be confronted and Pharaoh would be confronted with the death of the firstborn as the last plague. And when they refused to let the people go, it was at that time that the angel of death went through the city. And if they did not have the blood on the doorpost and on the lentil, then the firstborn child was destroyed. What an awful time it must have been in the land of Egypt. But that rebellion that came from uh, Pharaoh was dealt with very strongly. And the people recognized that Pharaoh is not God. He is not the one who is God. Um, Moses, you know, he was named for, uh, his name really meant taken from the water or son of the water. Uh, <clears throat> in, in, the, in their uh, Egyptian tongue, Moses as it was, was the son of and water. But when you look at Ramesses, that, that last part, Messes, is like the Moses and Ra, the son of Ra or the son of God. So here, Pharaoh was looking like the son of God. He believed himself to be God incarnate on planet earth with his brothers and sisters of the deity form that had gone on before him or working side by side with him. Here we see Moses is about ready to go into Pharaoh's court now and fulfill the word of the Lord. Now he's already gone to the nation of Israel. He's already talked to their leaders. He's already shown them the miracles. They're convinced that God has spoken to Moses. They're ready to go with him. So let's pick up here in Exodus 5, 1. After that, Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh. They said, God, the God of Israel says, free my people so that they may hold a festival for me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, and who is God that I should listen to him and send Israel off? I know nothing of this so-called God, and I'm certainly not going to send Israel off. Wow, when you think about the position Pharaoh was in, who is this individual? Who is this God that I should be sending the children of Israel off? Who is he? I don't know who he is. Why should I let them go? Verse three, then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. What a statement this was. Pharaoh comes at them and he says, why should I do this? Why should I do this? Why do you take the people away from their work? Is that what you're all about? Getting them out of work? 
Get back to your labor, your burdens. Now he's including Aaron and Moses in with the rest of the Israelites. He's not seeing a difference. He's trying to put them into their place of subservient nature to him. He alone is God. You go back to work. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are many now, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their foremen, you shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made in the past, you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it for they are idle. Therefore they cry, let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. He said they're getting soft. They're getting lazy. Therefore, Take the straw away. Let them gather their own straw. Man, there's no letting up with Pharaoh. Not only do they have to make the same amount of bricks, but now they have to do it by gathering their own straw. Now, what's taking place? Let's look at the big picture for a moment. Moses has gone in to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. What's happening? It seems like they're going into more bondage. Right when it should be breakthrough time, it's going the opposite direction. Hear me. Many times when you're about ready to experience your greatest deliverance, your greatest breakthrough, it's at that moment that things get tougher and it seems like the night is coming and it's getting darker and darker and darker. And you cry out to God, where is this promise? I'm supposed to have my breakthrough. Where is the promise, God? Where is it at? I need a breakthrough. And it seems to get harder. It was the same for the children of Israel here in Egypt. But I want you to drop down to verse 9. He says this, Pharaoh says, Let heavier work be laid on the men that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. Uh-oh. Why would he say that? Lying words. Well, here's what the enemy always does. Did God say? Remember, Aaron and Moses are there to deliver them. And all of a sudden, don't pay attention to lying words. Did God say? It's no different. Doing the same thing now that the devil's always done. Did God say? Hmm. Mm. So the taskmasters and the foremen of the people went out and said to the people, thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your straw yourselves wherever you can find it, but your work will not be reduced in the least. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent saying, complete your work, your daily task each day as their as when there was straw. And the foremen of the people of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and were asked, why have you not done all your task of making bricks today and yesterday as in the past? Then the foremen of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, make bricks. And behold, your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. But he said, you are idle, you are idle, you're lazy, you're lazy. That is why you say, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. What is still on Pharaoh's mind? See, the people that are coming to him now are not Aaron and Moses. They're coming to him and saying, why are you beating us? We're your servants. And he's going, you're lazy. And you say, let us go sacrifice to the Lord. Go now and work. No straw will be given you, but you must still deliver the same number of bricks. The foremen of the people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, you shall by no means reduce your number of bricks, your daily task each day. They met Moses and Aaron who were waiting for them as they came out from Pharaoh. And they said to them, the Lord look on you and judge because you have made a stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. Now, these are people that are in bondage and they want to come out of bondage. They want to get out of the bondage that they're in. But what has happened? 
You have made us stink in the eyes of Pharaoh. Oh, today, leaders, that you would make the people of God stink in the eyes of the world. That when they look at us, we stink in the eyes of the world. What do I mean by that? Not a smell, but we're so different that they look at us and they know we're different. They know we're children of the covenant. They know something different has taken place. Hear me, hear me, hear me, leaders. It is our responsibility to give them the word of the Lord. What the world does with it is not our concern. You're called to sow according to the parable of the sower. You're not called to make them believe. You're called to continue to sow. You sow and you sow and you sow. We know that there is hard ground and they're not going to believe. Just like Pharaoh, we know that there's shallow ground and they'll receive for a moment, then it's gone. We know that there is that which will fall into the ground and start to produce fruit, but then the thorns choke it out, the cares, riches, and pleasures. It's not your job to make people believe. It's your job to deliver the word of the Lord. And if you do so, hear me, the church is going to stink in the eyes of the world because it will come against what the world stands for. Then Moses turned to the Lord and said, O Lord, why have you done this evil to your people? Why have you done this? I don't understand. Why have you done this to your people? Now notice what he goes on to say. He says this. He said to them, the Lord look on you and judge. That's what the people had said. And Moses says, Lord, why have you done this evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? Listen, when you're about ready to get your breakthrough, you may question why it is you are where you are. Don't question it. Whatever decision you make in the presence of the Lord, whatever quality decision you make in the presence of the Lord, you never change when you're faced with situations and circumstances. Stay true to what it is that God's told you. Wrapping up chapter five. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people and you have not delivered your people at all. Oh my. You see, Moses is only looking at what he sees around him. He's only looking. I don't see the people being delivered. I don't see them delivered here, God. Why are you doing this? Why didn't you send me? If you weren't going to deliver them, why did you do that? How many times have we risen up and say, God, you said in your word, if it's not true, why, why, why send it? Why give it to me to believe? Why ask me to believe it if it's not true? And we go down that road. Have patience. God knows what he's doing. You will be delivered. You were delivered by the blood of Jesus at the cross of Calvary. Now it's for you to go and move in the very things that God has given to us. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Come back tomorrow. We're going to continue on studying the life of Moses and the deliverance of the people of Israel. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. God bless you and have a super day.